This is the Louis T Network. Welcome to another installment of the Draft Prospects 101 series, your guide to some of the biggest and hottest names of the 2017 NFL Draft. Of course, I am your set man, Louis T, here to take you on this journey as we continue to talk about the quarterback position. And as I've mentioned with some of the other quarterbacks that I've already done, if you've been watching Mitch Trubisky of Mitchell Trubisky, mama named him Mitchell, I'm going to call him Mitchell Trubisky and Deshaun Kaiser. Um, None of these guys to me strike me as quarterbacks that can come in and start day one. And I think I've already kind of beat that drum already or beaten it already um, throughout this process. But I don't think any of these guys are equipped with the skill sets necessary to come in and get the job done right away. But if there were a quarterback in this draft class that I thought could come in and if you catered to his skill set and kind of tailored your, ta- your your playbook and the play calling to his strong suits, this is probably the one guy, because of his competitive nature and the, his ability, his innate ability to win, that I would trust in a situation where he could come in, you run some read option, you get him some easy looks, you get him out of the pocket, you allow him to be comfortable, aid him with a little bit of a run game, and I think this next quarterback could be a guy that could potentially give you some quality starts in his rookie season. I wouldn't advise it, but if you needed to, I think Deshaun Watson is a guy that could potentially get that job done for you. He's up next on the Draft Prospects 101 series. Let's jump into Deshaun Watson and what he brings to the table. And we're gonna start with his pros. When talking Deshaun Watson, the the first thing I look at with him is his arm. I think he's got a three-level arm, a guy that can push it down the field with ease, can throw it on the move, has enough zip on the football to fit it into some tight windows in those intermediate throws, Um, can be off balance but still get the football to its intended target. So uh, I think he can do the underneath thing, he can do the intermediate, and he can also push it down the field. We've seen him do it throughout his career at Clemson. No doubt about it, three-level arm, he can get the job done. More than enough arm strength to get it done at a high level at the National Football League level. Uh, Very accurate. Okay, this is a guy that has been hovering around 68% throughout his career. Uh, Two years ago in 2015, 67.8% completion percentage this past year, 67%. So this is a guy that consistently is pushing near 70% completion percentage. Now again, college football, spread offenses, a lot of underneath dink and dunk throws, but then also when the time comes to push it down the field, to go intermediate, to go down the field, he's not missing those throws that they're, they're, uh, that often as well. So he's a guy that I trust. If you tell him, hey, I need you to stick it in there on an 18-yard dig route, I feel very confident that he can do that. If you're giving him up an opportunity on a skinny post deep, 33 yards down the field, I feel confident that he can drop it in the box. He has very good accuracy as a quarterback. Sometimes it'll be a little bit off, but for the most part, and a lot of times it's when his footwork isn't uh, where it needs to be or he's not comfortable. It's not his first read. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. But for the most part, Deshaun Watson for me is a very accurate thrower of the football, especially underneath and intermediate. Dual threat slash athleticism is the next pro. This goes without saying And this is a guy that we saw at Clemson, more so in 2015 than in 2016, but nonetheless, a guy that could get loose, run the football with the best of them in this draft at the quarterback position, but also hurt you with his arm. Uh, He's a guy that uh, he can beat you from the pocket, uh, would love to get outside, make some things happen with his legs, put pressure on the defense with his mobility and ability to run the football. But make no mistake about it, Deshaun Watson can run, 
and throw it equally as well. And that's what makes guys like him scary in the National Football League. Marcus Mariota has shown you what a guy that ran a spread offense that can run and throw it equally as well can do for your football team. And I think Deshaun Watson is in that similar mold and makeup. Not as big and hulking and imposing a figure as Mariota at 6'4", about 220. Uh, but Watson still the same athlete as a Mariota. Mariota a little bit more athletic. Again, we're talking about an elite athlete in Mariota, but Deshaun Watson not that far off as a dual threat quarterback entering the National Football League. Uh, toughness. I I've talked about toughness with some of these other quarterbacks, their ability to stare down the gun barrel, this, that, and the third. This is a different level of toughness we're talking about here, okay? This is that built for tough. If I had money, I'd tell you what I'd do. I'd go downtown, buy a Ford truck or two. Crazy about a Ford truck. This guy is Ford tough, built for tough. I, I, I vividly remember him back in 2014, playing on one ACL. And remember Donovan McNabb did the same thing versus the Arizona Cardinals once upon a time in his career on one ACL. Now at the time, probably didn't know it was torn. No, he knew something was wrong with his ACL. Didn't know at the time it was torn. He went out and gutted it out against intrastate rival South Carolina and took his Clemson Tigers to a victory on one ACL. That's toughness, folks. Okay, we saw Phillip Rivers do it in a playoff game versus the Indianapolis Colts once upon a time as well. So we've seen quarterbacks do it, but it's not an easy feat to accomplish. Wouldn't advise anyone out there to try to do so. And uh, that's toughness. On a scale of 10, that's an 11, okay? He's a tough customer. He can get the job done. Not afraid to take a shot and deliver the football. But if, you're, if anyone's playing on one ACL, you got my vote for a tough son of a gun. He's a tough SOB. So toughness, definitely a quality that Deshaun Watson has and will bring to any football team that he is drafted to. Next thing is another thing that I think he will bring immediately. He steps into your locker room and not immediately, immediately he will bring competitiveness. He's a competitor. That's the next pro for him, for me. I look at Deshaun Watson and probably the first trait that comes to my mind that I think of is competitor. I've seen this guy in close ball games will his team to victories and Clemson played in a multitude of close games. Just trying to rattle off a few off the top of my dome from this past season. They had the first game of the season versus Auburn was a close game. Uh, they had another close game versus Louisville in that big showdown on a Saturday night. They had another close one against Florida State, if I'm, uh, memory serves me correct. Of course, the national championship game versus Alabama was a nail biter down to the very last second of the game. Uh, they may have even had like a little bit of a hiccup versus Troy early in the season when everybody was asking what the hell was wrong with Clemson when they were sneaking by teams. And so he's been in a ton. And, and that's only 2016. Go to 2015, the Notre Dame game. There are plenty of games that were close football games. His competitiveness is infectious. When you see your quarterback putting it out on the line, when you see your quarterback wanting to win, and this guy's a winner, and we'll talk about that here in a second. It is infectious and it spreads to the rest of the football team. This guy is a natural born leader, which is the next pro. More so than some of these other quarterbacks that I've talked about and with Mitchell Trubisky, doesn't have enough credentials, hasn't played enough games to be considered a leader quite yet. You look at Deshaun Kaiser, that Notre Dame team fell apart at the seams. You could blame talent, you can blame coaching, you can blame what you want, but the leadership wasn't at the top. They were flip-flopping quarterbacks in and out. If this guy's your leader, you're not gonna take him out of the game. Deshaun Watson is a leader. He's competitive. He wants to win. You give him the football late in the ball game, he expects to get the job done. And that is something that is a big trait for me. Uh, what is it? It is that intestinal fortitude that you gotta have, or as I like to say, ice testicles, icy testicles. Late in the ball game, I need to be able to give you the ball, look you in your eyes and see that you're not scared and ask you to go get me a game winning field goal. Ask you to take the team into the end zone, down four, for a score to give us the win. Deshaun Watson is one of those guys, without a doubt in my mind, go look at the Alabama game. They were trailing for the majority of that game. They were struggling offensively. He's a competitor, he never gave up. Took his team down the field late in that game when they had to have a touchdown. 
took him down the field and won the game. And, and really, a field goal would have tied the game. He wanted a touchdown. He wanted to win the game, and that's what they did. So I, I love Deshaun Watson. I love what he brings to the table as a competitor, as a leader. Those two are some big traits that if you draft him day one, I think you're going to get that on your football team. More so, and this is part of the reason why I think he can start day one, more so than uh, Trubisky, more so than a Kaiser, more so than any of these other quarterbacks, Kaya or anybody else, Mahomes the second, any of these other quarterbacks, I think Watson provides a little bit more competitiveness. And again, you can't measure a man's heart, so I can't say with 100% certainty that those other quarterbacks don't want it as much as Deshaun Watson. It just seems like he wants it more. And I know that this guy's a leader and he got it done at Clemson. Speaking of which, part of the reason you know he's a leader, he's a winner, okay? And to me, that trumps all. You may not like a guy. A lot of people, you've heard countless players leave Green Bay and say they don't like Aaron Rodgers. He's not a great leader. Okay, I don't know if it's factual or not, okay? Nor do I care. You know why? Because the man is a winner. The Packers consistently go to the postseason. The Packers consistently have a shot at winning because of Aaron Rodgers. He's a winner. Tom Brady is a winner. When quarterbacks win, they give their team a chance. Deshaun Watson is a winner. Clemson was 28-2 over his life of his career as a starter. Only two losses in his entire collegiate career. One to Alabama in the national championship game in 2015. One to Pitt in 2016 in a nail biter in Death Valley. So this guy doesn't lose very often. Okay, he is a winner. Was a few plays here or there from being a two-time national champion at Clemson. And he, he avenged that loss in 2016 with his comrades as they beat the Alabama Clemson, uh, Crimson Tide in the national championship game in 2017. So uh, look, this guy is a leader and more importantly, he's a winner. You say what you want about Deshaun Watson, one thing you can't call him is a loser. This guy wins consistently. Something that I worry about with Deshaun Kaiser, who didn't have a great record at Notre Dame. Something that I worry about with uh, Mitchell Trubisky because he didn't play a ton of games. This guy has a large body of work. And what 28 and two says to me is, with the game on the line, I can get it done. If I'm supposed to beat a team, we're gonna beat that team. And when we're supposed to be in a battle with a football team, I'm gonna find a way to get it done and make sure that at the end of the day, our hand is raised as the victor. That's what you want out of your quarterback. So you go from his pros to Deshaun Watson and some of his cons. All right, so for me, the, the one that I, I can kind of rule out now, but I'm still gonna ask the question despite having somewhat of an answer now is, I don't love his size. That was one of my first cons that I wrote down in my notes. I, I didn't love 6'2", 207, anything south of 215. And I got questions because I saw Robert Griffin III. I've seen Teddy Bridgewater. I see what fragile, frail body quarterbacks, I see what happens to them at the next level, okay? Sometimes non-contact injuries snap their body in two. In the case of a Teddy Bridgewater or even a Robert Griffin III, when you don't have the frame nor the structure for the NFL game, which is a physical, brutal game, especially at the quarterback position, it can take its toll on you and you can find yourself in the pink room more so than on the football field. And even Marcus Mariota at 6'4", but not the biggest guy, um, frame-wise has dealt with some injuries throughout his career. Hard to stay healthy, especially when you're a dual threat quarterback, hard to stay healthy when you are one of these guys that likes to leave the pocket. A lot of these injuries, though, occur in the pocket, believe it or not. The misconception and misnomer is that, oh, a dual threat quarterback gonna get hurt because he's gonna run all the time. That's not necessarily the case. Au contraire, my friend. A lot of these injuries happen inside the pocket, but nonetheless, Deshaun Watson came to the combine at 221. So that right there kind of put me at ease, made me call off the dogs, so to speak, but. Is that really your playing weight or did you put that weight on to impress the scouts and is that weight actually gonna come back off? That's the question I have because I don't know if he's naturally a 221 pound, but again, young man growing into his body, maybe he can put on 10 pounds because this guy was right around 210 at Clemson, 207, somewhere in that general vicinity while playing at Clemson. That's not big enough for the NFL game. And so uh, 221, fine by me. If you can keep that weight on and play and do what you've done, 
throughout your career. I have no problems with that whatsoever, but I do not love his size if he is not going to be able to stay and maintain that 220 pound frame, especially being 6'2 at that. Torn ACL in 2014, I just spoke about that. Uh, him gutting it out, toughing it out against South Carolina. Not an easy feat to accomplish, but again, that's a little bit, uh, on that Carfax report that we have with these players coming out of the college game, that's a little ding on the Carfax report. We need to see what kind of damage and mileage do you have if you're a running back. Hey man, Christian McCaffrey, man, you had an awful lot of touches. That's on the Carfax report for Deshaun Watson, Torn ACL in 2014. That's on the Carfax report. So you just got to know what you're getting yourself into. Once you tear an ACL, once you blow out an Achilles, you're more susceptible to doing it again, much like Robert Griffin III. We saw that movie before. We know how that story ends. Hopefully that's not the case for Deshaun Watson. But again, that, like I said before, I'll say it once more. It's on the Carfax report. Just thought I'd make mention of it. And then finally, this is the biggest one for me. This is the reason why he can't play in his rookie season or he shouldn't play. But again, if anyone was going to play out of this draft class year one, for me, it'd be Deshaun Watson. But uh, he's a spread read option quarterback, which you're saying, okay, well, all of these guys are. What's the difference? To me, he's more of a one read quarterback. And th th these are the guys that scare the hell out of me because these are the guys that make mistakes at the next level. I, I look at him and I see more of a Robert Griffin III type of quarterback at Baylor, a guy that, hey, if that first read's open, this guy is dangerous. He's electric, okay? You're not gonna find many more accurate with the ability to get the football out in front of a guy that, so he can catch it and run after the catch, make things happen. You're not gonna see a quarterback more dynamic in the pocket when the first read is available. Okay, I, I will put any amount of money, I will put my money where my mouth is on Deshaun Watson over any quarterback in this draft when that first read is open. You give Watson an open first read, he's gonna shred you, okay? Like, like some cheese that's going on my macaroni and cheese, okay? He's gonna shred you. But, you take that first option away, and all of a sudden, Deshaun Watson becomes antsy. And a lot of times, if you go back and watch the tape, his initial reaction to that first read not being there is to, hey, I'm gonna tuck this shit and I'm gonna run. I'm gonna tuck it and run. I'm gonna go much faster than slow. And at the next level, you can't do that. You gotta go through your progressions and make decisions. Now, it's not all the time. He will go through progressions sometimes and you'll see him, but a lot of times when he makes a mistake, when he throws an interception, okay, when he's almost picked off, when, when he takes a sack, it's because the defense takes away the opening option, that first read that he wants to go to is not there and then he starts to panic things start to speed up in his mind maybe a little bit faster than they should all of a sudden now oh i gotta get out of here i gotta go i gotta go i gotta go i gotta go right now and that's how you run into sacks that's how you run into mistakes that's how you turn the football over and i think another byproduct of him being a one read quarterback a guy that loves to go to that first read and you'll even see him force it Okay, a guy will be covered, but hey, that's my first read. Okay, I'm going to him. I'm gonna give him a chance when there may be another option open on it. He won't even think twice. He'll cut it loose on a deep ball. Guy will be double, triple covered. You're like, what, what the hell was that about? I mean, you saw it again. And I'm going, I'm going to reference this Louisville game a couple of times because in that Louisville game, you saw him force it down the field a couple of times with some guys that were covered because they were the first read. Also in that game, and I think this is a prime example of something else that really bothers me with him, is he doesn't see underneath defenders. He's a guy that will throw the football and blindly throw it right to a defender. That Louisville game for me is by far and away the most bi the, the biggest indictment on him as a guy that just doesn't see underneath defenders sometimes. And in that game, I think he threw two interceptions, if I'm not mistaken. Both of them probably were avoidable. Both of them were probably to underneath defenders that he just plain flat out did not locate. And that's a, that's a scary thing because in the next level, the, these defensive coordinators do a great job of sneaking guys out of your line of sight. If you've never had a football helmet on, trust me, it is tough with peripheral vision. There's only so much you can see. And at home, we'll say, well, damn, how didn't he see that guy? Because you can only see so much out of an NFL helmet. So he's one of these guys that he gets tunnel vision when he's throwing the football. He gets fixated on a target. He will not see that, that DB undercutting a route. He won't see that dropping linebacker. Go to that Louisville game. He could have thrown three or four interceptions. I think he threw two in that game. 
And I'm, I'm telling you, he could have thrown two or three more because he flat out doesn't see underneath defenders a lot of times. And his interception total went up from 13 in 2015 to 17. And I guarantee you, the difference there, the underneath defender. Go take a look at that. That's something that Watson struggles with. And I think it's a byproduct of him simply being more comfortable with that first option and that first read in his progression being open and when it's not. That's when he starts to struggle. Then he comes backside and he cuts it loose and he doesn't see that dropping linebacker who's in the hook zone or that dropping linebacker who's dropping to get depth that's right there in that position to tip the football or possibly pick it off. So to me, those are your cons with Deshaun Watson, but they far outweigh or his pros far outweigh those cons. I think this guy, with some time in the right system, could end up being a polished NFL product. He's got the talent, he's got the it factor, he's got the competitiveness, he's a winner, he's a natural born leader. All of the things you look for in an NFL quarterback, Deshaun Watson possesses those traits. And so I think he just needs the right system, he needs the right home, he needs the right coaching, he needs the right location. If those things fall into place for him, you surround him with some talent, this is a guy that I think even in year one could potentially see the field. I wouldn't, again, I wouldn't advise that, but if need be, I think he's the guy that to me strikes me as the guy that could come in and help a team year one and help them get a couple of victories, even if the talent doesn't su suggest that they should be able to. It's gonna do it for Deshaun Watson and his Draft Prospects 101 breakdown. If it happens in the National Football League, whether big or small, we cover it all here on the Louis T Network. Come back, because I got plenty more uh, content for you, plenty more Draft Prospects 101 series. We're gonna uh, knock down a couple more quarterbacks, and then we're gonna shift gears to another position. I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Take care. Whether you're looking for more great content or more of me, your man, Louis T. Follow, like, and subscribe to the following social media platforms of mine.